it is my pleasure to introduce Mark Wilson, President and CEO of the Florida Chamber of Commerce. Mark? All right. Well, Yvette, thanks very much for opening up this uh, very important conversation today. And, and Joe Marino, let me thank you and Veterans Florida right out of the box. We, um, Florida uh, is trying to have the best workforce in the United States, and veterans are incredibly important to Florida and to the future of Florida. And we're fortunate. Most states wish they had an organization like Veterans Florida. And on behalf of all of us on the call today, Joe, thanks for your service and, and thanks for the organization. So as a vet said, um, I'm Mark Wilson. I have the privilege of serving as the president of Florida's Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of our entire membership and our board of directors, I want to thank everyone across Florida for joining us today. We're obviously talking about workforce. We're talking about a very important initiative and some legislation that we're all supporting that will make Florida more competitive going forward. So big picture to set this up. Right now, right here in Florida, we have 371,000 jobs that are open that are looking for qualified people to fill them. And at the same time, we have 614,000 people who are looking to fill those jobs. And so we have a big need in Florida to get skills training and upskilling uh, so that our potential employees can meet the needs of job creators throughout Florida. So to bridge that gap, we are investing in upskilling, uh, in transitioning service members with new credentials and matching the skilled talent to the workforce needs right here in Florida. And as I said earlier, this investment is more important now than it's ever been before because our focus is to secure Florida's future. And as everyone knows, over the next decade, we expect another 4 million people to call Florida home. And together with Enterprise Florida and, and our local economic development and local chamber partners, we need to create 2 million more jobs over the next 10 years. So having a very focused upskilling program uh, like the one we're going to talk about today is going to be essential as we grow manufacturing and as we grow jobs and diversify our economy over the next decade. So. I think everyone knows our military installations and the defense industry are incredibly powerful and important economic drivers here in Florida. And service members, uh, you may not know, service members typically remain in the state where they ended their service. And we can retain their talent right here in Florida. And if we do that, we'll increase our economic activity as we rebound from COVID and as we continue to grow Florida I think, as everyone knows, if we were our own country, we would be the 17th largest economy in the world. Our big goal over the next decade is to unite the business community together like we're doing today and to grow Florida to the 10th largest economy in the world by 2030. That would make us bigger than Mexico's economy in just 10 years. And today's program is an important way to get there. Uh, Florida currently has over one and a half million veterans, and that number is growing. We have the third highest number of veterans uh, in the United States, and we're proud of that fact. And we're the un undeniably, we're the number one place in America for veterans uh, after they serve. So we appreciate that. Um, recently, uh, legislation has been filed by uh, Senator Tom Wright and Representative Tyler Soroy, and it will allow Veterans Florida to serve as Florida's principal assistance organization under the United States Department of Defense's Skills Bridge Program for employers and transitioning service members. Part of the legislation uh, will match transitioning service members with opportunities, with job opportunities that are offered by participating job creators throughout Florida. Obviously, the intent here is to have transition service members achieve gainful employment in Florida upon completion of their Skills Bridge training. So, again, uniting the entire business community around this legislation is, is one big way that we can help ensure Florida's global competitiveness and we can ensure that we're going to create uh, high-wage, high-skilled jobs as we diversify our economy here in Florida. Uh, this is exactly the kind of legislation that Florida needs to remain competitive. We also all have a Florida 2030 goal that by 2030, 80% of our workforce has essential employability skills. Um, and the Skills Bridge program that you're going to hear about today is, is a very important way uh, for us to move that forward. So, again, as part of the Florida 2030 blueprint, 
the Florida Chamber has set workforce-specific goals, and we want to be one of the top five states in America for manufacturing jobs. That means we have to add about 200,000 manufacturing jobs over the next decade, and we appreciate Kevin Carr and the Florida Makes leadership for that. We also want to be top three states for technology jobs. And again, programs like SkillsBridge will help us reach these goals as we create new jobs and we fill them with the talent that SkillsBridge will help us create. And so again, uh, if we don't invest in these service members and if we don't upskill them to meet the exact needs of Florida's job creators, then we're missing a huge opportunity and that would be a shame. So uh, with, again, with funding from the Department of Defense, Florida companies will be able to hire future employees from an already pre-qualified group so that they'll already know that they're getting the best fit without having to invest additional funds in the recruitment process. And those can be used to create even more good jobs in Florida. And so these companies obviously will be matched with talent that's specific to their needs. And we're on board in a big way with the program. So the Florida Chamber uh, and our partners are fully supportive of Senate Bill 586 and House Bill 435. And we look forward to working with Senator Wright and Representative Soroy as these bills make it through the legislative process and hopefully in the best form possible to the desk of Governor DeSantis. And so what I'd like to do now, Joe, I started this off by thanking you for your service and for your leadership. And I'd, li I'd like to hand it over now to the executive director of uh, Veterans Florida, Joe Marino. And Joe, as, as I mentioned, I want to thank you for your service to this country. We have several people on the line today who have served. Um, and I want to thank you. I want to thank Derek, who we're going to hear from later. I want to thank Jamal, who we're going to hear from later. So many of you have served. Remember, free enterprise isn't free. But if we didn't have our freedoms, we wouldn't even be able to fight for free enterprise. And so we all owe you a debt of gratitude. So, Joe, thanks for your leadership. And at this time, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. The floor is yours. Mark, uh, thank you so much for that great introduction and summary of the importance of uh, this initiative uh, as embodied in House Bill 5, or sorry, Senate Bill 586 and House Bill 435. Uh, and of course, we thank the sponsors, uh, Senator Wright and Representative Soroy, for introducing this. The, uh, the SkillBridge initiative really uh, is a partnership. So I'm not going to take up too much time because I'm really interested in hearing what the partners have to say. Um, we are facilitators in this endeavor. Uh, our, uh, our mission is to provide economic opportunity for veterans and transitioning service members in Florida and to those who are interested in moving to Florida. So we promote what Florida does throughout the country and really the world when you look at the footprint of where service members uh, uh, live and uh, conduct their activities. Uh, so in, in light of the economic opportunity that we are to provide uh, transitioning service members and veterans, uh, we already have a successful workforce grant for employers to upskill veterans. Uh, we also have a very successful entrepreneurship program uh, creating uh, veteran-owned businesses all across the state. Uh, so SkillBridge fits in very nicely with that. Uh, looking at the state's budget picture, uh, the wonderful thing about this initiative is it does not require any new dollars above what we're already getting appropriated for uh, for the VETS program. The VETS program is the program uh, providing this economic opportunity that we administer under the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. So in that respect, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for the state to take the lead without having to uh, recreate the wheel. We've seen other states start to do this, but we believe Florida can do it better. Uh, really, the mission of the SkillBridge Initiative is to train, retain, and attract the veteran workforce of tomorrow and maintain Florida's competitive edge by creating a talent pipeline to fuel the state's economic growth. Uh, and with that, uh, please allow me to introduce Derek Fishback. Uh, he is, uh, he's got a lot more experience with SkillBridge uh, than I do when I got out. When I got out, uh, uh, it was basically a two week uh, transition class uh, and it's gotten better over the years. Uh, but I, I really wanna hear from Derek uh, what his experience was uh, with, uh, with uh, the SkillBridge program. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Good morning to the panelists. Uh, um, essentially, 
I had an opportunity to um, to experience the skill bridge program just by accident. And I explained to the the, the, the committee before uh, was uh, I was a I'm a retired U.S. Army Colonel. I was stationed here in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, I was the only Army Colonel uh, in the Pensacola area at the time. And so. Uh, uh, in order to transition, I knew that three years out, my transition would happen. And so I looked forward to uh, the opportunities. Um, I was able to attend a Hiring Our Heroes Fellows uh, conference here at Pensacola Naval Air Station. And over and during that conference, I had a chance to hear about fellowships and, and programs and someone brought up Skillbridge program, which I really didn't know about initially. And that program was at the two year mark before I was leaving. So I attended this conference and it was good that I did because they didn't have another conference after that. And so I was able to make contact and have a discussion with uh, the Hiring Our Heroes uh, organization out of the US Chamber of Commerce. And they were part of SkillBridge program. Um, in discussions with them, I discovered they did not have a SkillBridge uh, specific program for me uh, under Hiring Our Heroes in Florida. So I had actually attended in Atlanta, Georgia, where I was able to acquire an internship with IBM, working on their AI Watson program, uh, specifically because I wanted to get back in information technology. Um, but I was so senior, uh, it, was, it was a little bit of a rough road just trying to get through all of it all. Um, but I realized um, that there was a gap that existed. So I went ahead and just attended the program. Because of that, I attended that internship. I was able to later acquire a position as an engagement manager with Amazon Web Services uh, during the program. And had I not had that opportunity, to go through the, the fellowship program under hiring heroes in the skill bridge pro, under the skill bridge program. I don't think I'd have had a, a as clear a path as I've had in order to acquire that position so shortly after I retired. Um, one reason I found that the skill bridge program is important uh, overall for service members, no matter what their branch of service is and no matter what their rank is, is because it helps them to, them to transition professionally and personally into the civilian workforce. Um, into actually to civilian life, not just the workforce. It is a good way to to technically and uh, socially and emotionally transition out of the service. Um, because as someone discovering, because I've worked with a lot of veterans now and try to get them in certain programs uh, through my position at Amazon, and also, also personally I do it, um, is that there's a lot of shock therapy when it comes to, hey, I, I thought because I was in the military and I was a veteran that people would just hire me. And it's like, no, it's actually, it's a process. You have to work the process and you have to work it smartly and education wise. You have to educate yourself. And so I think it's important that the state of Florida does support it and does identify itself as an entity that is wrapping its hands around uh, helping the veteran, uh, no matter what their service is, effectively transition, whether they stay in Florida or not. Here's the reason why. That individual will, has, has more skills and more trainings initially by the time they're 21 than most, 20, most high school kids have when they, they transition to a normal job. And so the, the transition path is easier over the period of time to actually work for an employer. And so that, that's, that, that person becomes a very employable and utilized leader within a corporation that exists within uh, the, make, the economic systems that we have here in Florida. So I think it's important that uh, the state endorses it because not many states can endorse it or have endorsed it to this level. And what you're saying is, I think that that individual, that service, this program is that important to our economy here in Florida. And it's also good for our society because you're enabling the individual to transition effectively. Um, this is not my first time transitioning out of the military. I transitioned in 1995, and the first thing I was asked was, hey, what do you want to do? You want to join the National Guard and be a pilot? I was like, no. Okay, well, good. Have a nice day. And that was, that was effectively my transition uh, back in 95. And so I think it's, it's, the program is very, very important uh, to help persons that live in the state transition effectively to support the society, but also support themselves as, as they grow, because they will eventually see the value of being here and, and living in Florida um, and being part of this community and supporting the growth of that community. Here's another aspect of it also. Uh, most veterans that are transitioning, I've discovered that I've worked with my position have two courses they could take. And one is they can transition um, effectively to be working with an employer, but they can also become an entrepreneur. And in order to do that, I think sometimes they do have to start off working for somebody else to understand the environment that they want to work in as a civilian. And that helps them build out a business concept that sustains. Well, that automatically builds business opportunities here in the state of Florida. 
why wouldn't the state want to support that as an excellent resource to pull from? Because as has been proven statistically by many organizations like Gartner and others, is that a veteran has, when, a pursuit of entrepreneur, when, when there are entrepreneurial pursuits by veterans, they have a tendency to fare better. So why wouldn't you want to endorse that individual, help that individual transition effectively? I think it's important for companies that are on the, on the, on the call and the ones that are, exist within the chamber to understand that a veteran is a skilled individual that can facilitate and support the growth of your organization over a period of time. They're not there to take away from it, they're there to add to it. And that's been a proven fact that when veterans join, join corporations, they actually add to the mix. And that's why I've taken on a position at Amazon uh, as one of the, uh, as an additional duty, as a matter of fact, is working as a director of recruiting in Amazon for our particular division within Amazon to bring more veterans on board because they realize the long-term value for it. But I'm here to tell you that I could not have gotten as far as I have in a short period of time because um, I retired in April, of, sorry, February 1st of, of last year. COVID happened. Everybody got in lockdown. And so the opportunity started compressing, so to speak. But on the same token, and it's been almost a year to that, to that date that I find myself uh, having been blessed with this opportunity that was afforded to me by going through the Skill Bridge program. And for that, I think it's a great program and I've always feel very grateful for that. So, Joe. Thank you so much, Derek. Um, and now I would like to introduce Senator Tom Wright to share some remarks. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Senator Tom Wright here. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Derek for uh, the wonderful job of presenting the benefits of the Skill Bridge program. I think I can probably just say ditto and, and uh, turn my mic back off because you did a wonderful job, Derek, and I'm so proud of you, as I am all of our veterans. You know, uh, Director Joe Marino and everyone involved is, is really helping us out to make this happen. And I think the emphasis on the importance of this legislation is already played out in Mark's comments and Joe's comments and Derry's comments. So I don't think I need to uh, take time to talk about the importance of this. The numbers of the veterans that are in the state has already spoken for itself. And as a member of the Senate and in District 14, where the space, uh, space arena is located, um, we are trying to work with all of our educators to try and produce better STEM trained individuals. And what better individuals would that be than those veterans that we already have? Those folks, um, in one of my talking points, uh, I don't think we even need to bring it up how disciplined and understanding sometimes I tease, they even know what starting time means. Uh, there's so many, I, I've had factories here myself in Florida and starting time is, is, is an ish. Like you mean eight ish? I like, no, I mean five to eight, you know, type of thing. So. Cobridge program is, is a wonderful program. Uh, I'm gonna be introducing our house uh, member, uh, Tyler here in a moment. And he, he stepped forward and said, I wanna be a part of this as much as I wanted to be a part of it. The role that Veterans Florida plays in this capacity is crucial to the success of our, of our veterans. It's like any program that we have available to us in the state, who's gonna run it? How's it gonna get it uh, you know, implemented? And I can't think of a better organization than Veterans Florida that can make this happen. Uh, so many times in my particular position as a Senator for District 14, is we have people on one side that are looking for something and we have people on the other side that are offering something and we can just be the conduit that puts those two sides together. And I, and I tease a lot of my fellow uh, folks that work in the Capitol that we have a lot of great programs here in the state of Florida, but one of the things we're not very good at is marketing. We have these programs, but we forget to tell people about them. And so the Chamber of Commerce is a great way to get the information out. In event, this is what you're doing today. And I, and I applaud everyone there. Um, you know, this bill will play in improving the transition for those who have served our country. It'll contribute to all of our collective efforts here in Florida to make Florida number one workforce in the coming years. And that's important. Uh, if not for any other reason than to make sure we maintain ourselves as the space port of the globe. And we have so many opportunities. So I want to thank you, Joe, for uh, being here today and for stepping forward with Veterans Florida to make this uh, happen. I, I'm going to uh, 
defer to my friend Tyler Soroy here in a moment because between him and I, we are going to get this over the finish line with all of your help. So thank you for listening to me this morning and I look forward to uh, answering any questions at the end of this call. So if you will, please, uh, please allow me to introduce House Representative Tyler Soroy. Tyler. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you very much. It's it's good to see everybody today. Senator Wright, thank you for the introduction. I'm I'm excited to get the band back together. Uh, mm -hmm. We had some great uh, success last session, uh, adding uh, to our school curriculum and our school grading criteria student participation in JROTC courses and other military preparedness courses. So today we're really reaffirming Florida's commitment to being uh, the number one place in the nation for our veterans to come in and reside and to enter the workforce. And this piece of legislation, I think is gonna be a great tool in the toolbox in terms of revitalizing Florida's economy, uh, growing the skill and, and vitality of our workforce. And really, uh, as Senator Wright said here on the Space Coast, you know, tremendous and, and growing opportunity in aerospace and modeling simulation and training and aviation uh, and, and all of the new uh, facets and technology that we're exploring related to the Space Force. Uh, so a lot of opportunity here in Florida. I think that this legislation is going to go a long way to, to bring our uh, honored veterans into the mix and, and adding their uh, skills and expertise to our workforce. And, and once again, Florida is, is demonstrating that commitment uh, to our veterans and their families. And that's something that I'm very honored to be a part of and look forward to working with you all. And uh, thank you again. Uh, for the uh, invitation to participate. I'd like to uh, invite uh, Major General James uh, Hammer uh, Hartzell, the Deputy Executive Director of Veterans Florida, uh, to provide some comments as well. Thank you all very much. Great, thank you, uh, Representative Soroy. Uh, Senator Wright, sir, it's always good to see you and uh, really appreciate uh, Joe Marino and the team from Veterans Florida asking me to participate today. Uh, I'm excited about uh, this legislation about SkillBridge. Uh, for, for both uh, Representative Soroy, Senator Wright, thank you for your sponsorship of this critical veterans legislation that's gonna help not only our employers, but also uh, our veterans who are getting off active, active duty. You know, our great state of Florida remains steadfast in our commitment to support career ambitions of the 16,000 service members who transition annually from active duty in off of our 21 military bases we have all across the state. And the skill bridge legislation will ensure that veterans and their families will find a welcomed opportunity for employment right here in Florida. It also will ensure that we are the destination of choice when they transition to civilian life. We want these great Americans and their families to stay in Florida and to join us in our mission to make Florida the most veteran friendly state in the nation. I've personally seen firsthand how skill bridge benefits our service members during those critical months prior to when they hang up the uniform and they, tradition, they transition to what we veterans call the first civ div, first civilian division. Uh, this is valuable workforce training is a win-win for both the service members, but also for our state's employers. And it's another reason that Florida is the number one destination in the nation for veterans and their families. We have more veterans wanting to come into Florida than any other state in the nation. And they're great Americans and we want all of them to be with us. That's, I, I, I love this uh, legislation. I care about it and I fully support it. Uh, and it's now my pleasure to introduce a great fellow Marine who serves our state as the president and CEO of Enterprise Florida, Jamal Sowell. Jamal, you're up. Hey, Hammer. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. So this is an exciting uh, time because the Skillbridge program transitions our military service members from active duty to the vibrant Florida workforce that we need in order to be competitive. The program provides specific and modern training while service members bring experience discipline and integrity to the table. SkillBridge positions our state for success and gives our service members a place to serve after serving. From Enterprise Florida's perspective, the SkillBridge program is a winning combination for us all. Thank you to the bill sponsors and Veterans Florida for putting a spotlight on this terrific program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamal. And now I'd like to introduce um, Andrew Cornelius with Career Source Florida to share a few remarks. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. I am Andra Cornelius, Career Source Florida Senior Vice President of Business and Workforce Development. 
The mission of the Career Source Florida Network is to connect employers with qualified skilled talent and Floridians with employment and career development opportunities. Last year, our network helped connect more than 7,700 military veterans find new careers. We're so pleased to help raise awareness of the SkillBridge program, which has become a valuable tool to help transitioning service members connect with rewarding jobs. Career Source Okaloosa Walton is a great example. To date, more than 50 employers have registered with Career Source Okaloosa Walton as participating employers, and most have hosted SkillBridge interns. Over the past two and a half years, 72 transitioning service members have gained meaningful employment as a result of these internships. The program is so successful that a third of its participants relocated to the area specifically to participate. The migration of these highly skilled professionals is used by the local economic development councils in touting both the quality and quantity of the local workforce to prospective businesses. I'd like to leave you with one of Career Source Okaloosa Walton's SkillBridge success stories. Rich Abbott retired last year as a senior master sergeant after 22 years with the United States Air Force. Career Source Okaloosa Walton matched him with a SkillBridge internship at Titan Technologies. At the end of the internship, Rich was hired as a technical project manager. Rich says having an opportunity to transition from the military early to capture insight within the civilian sector, experience the company's culture, and preview a new role provides an invaluable experience for a successful military transition. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And now I'd like to introduce my friend, colleague, dear person, the Florida Economic Development Council Executive Director, Beth Cicchetti. Beth? Thank you, Andra, and good after or good morning, everybody. I am so pleased to be here with all of the strategic partners um, who represent Florida's economic and talent development ecosystem. Um, I specifically want to thank Senator Wright and Representative Soros for your recognition of the need to market Florida's competitive assets and to expand the toolkit that uh, over 400 FEDC members who practice economic workforce and community development rely on every day uh, as they focus on improving local communities and elevating Florida's global competitiveness. Uh, each of our members hear firsthand from locating and expanding employers who value the skills of Florida service members, uh, specifically soft skills and technical skills, and even skills in the trades are found to be some of the highest sought after um, skills for today's employers. The DOD SkillBridge program housed with Veterans Florida will allow these growing companies to match the right skills to the right position, thus ensuring a long-term success for the service member and the company. And it will also improve um, Florida's economy diversification, which helps us uh, shield us from the impacts of things like natural disasters and global health crises. Um, but it will also put Florida where we um, are looking to achieve to be. Uh, the Florida Economic Development Council is focused on uh, three of the Florida 2030 goals. Our members work daily to improve the gross domestic product here for Florida. We want to be first in the nation for state GDP. We also want to be in the top quartile for the most diversified state economy. And um, we also want to double Flora's rural share of uh, GDP. And doing all of that, we are pledged to put all 39 goals of the Florida 2030 plan into the regional economic development strategies. So this collectively with expanding our toolkit, I think will allow us to be able to achieve those goals. And at this time, it's my privilege to introduce a good friend and colleague and FEDC's 2011 
Eunice Sullivan, Economic Developer of the Year, Linda Weatherman, CEO of the Economic Development Council of Florida's Space Coast. Thank you, Beth. And I really appreciate the leadership you've shown in FEDC these last few years. And every time we need that true leadership, it's now. So I appreciate it. Thank you again for the comments. And I also want to thank Senator Wright, Representative Saroy, and Veterans Florida for their leadership on this initiative, which in addition to being the right thing to do, has many benefits from the state, some of which we've heard recently. It is Governor DeSantis' goal to make Florida the most military-friendly state in the nation, and certainly the Space Coast strives to be one of the most military-friendly communities in the state. It's in our DNA, and it's who we are. Brevard County is home to 3,835 active duty, reserve, and guard personnel, along with an additional 6,304 military dependents. More than 68,000 veterans, 11% of our population, call the Space Coast home. And let me tell you, we want more. Service members, their families, and veterans enrich our community and help fuel our economy. Florida was a leader when it signed the Interstate Compact on Educational Opportunity for Military Children. We now have an opportunity to take DOD Skillbridge to the next level with this statewide effort. Skillbridge will retain more of these talented individuals in Florida's communities by helping them transition to the civilian careers where their discipline and work ethic is in high demand. As a global center for aviation uh, innovation and aerospace, the Space Coast has led the state of Florida in the creation of manufacturing jobs in these areas. So you can see uh, we're certainly in demand for these skills. Nationally, we are number five in job growth, number nine in high-tech industries, and number 10 in high-tech GDP competition. And you can imagine the competition for talent is fierce and we face it every day. Establishing a strong pipeline between our service members and the business community is a win-win for all involved. Also, there's a big reason the Space Coast was a finalist to host the US Space Command. It's because Florida and our community are military friendly. As we compete for future strategic basing opportunities, efforts like statewide skill force will loom large and be a critical factor in our future success. On behalf of the EDC of Space Coast, I can assure you we will be a strong partner for this worthy program and look forward to working with you in Space Florida as I sit on the board of Vet Florida as well. Excuse me. Now we'll hear from Cesar Ruiz from the Learning Alliance Corporation. Thank you so much for including me. Thank you so much, Linda. I don't believe Cesar was able to join us, so I would like to introduce Patty Piazza with Onward to Opportunity to share some remarks. Patty? Thank you so much. Um, thank you for inviting me to participate. Super excited about this initiative. Um, we know how great it is to hire veterans for our employers, um, but the DOD Skillbridge exists to provide our transitioning service members um, the professional career development tools, resources, and in-demand industry certifications to launch themselves into the transitioning ecosystem. The Skillbridge and the internships offers them the medium, experience, and time to successfully navigate the extreme cultural differences between the military and civilian workplaces, which is one of the most difficult adjustments our transitioning service members have to make um, to have a successful transition. It's a great buffer for them to ease into the civilian lifestyle. Um, thank you so much for including us in this. Um, on which opportunity put in 587 students uh, just last year. So we are, we are boom in the state of Florida and we're very happy um, to be part of this initiative. So thank you. And I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Kevin Carr, CEO of Florida Makes. I'm assuming I unmuted well. Mm -hmm. So it's my pleasure to be here as well among all these partners uh, as, as, as Mark had, had mentioned earlier. We have a challenge to achieve the goal of being the 10th largest economy by uh, 2030. And within that challenge, packed into that challenge is a goal, uh, which we have the privilege of being the goal leader of achieving being number fifth, being in the top five for manufacturing jobs in the country. And, and as Mark pointed out, that number to achieve that at the current uh, point today is about 200 thousand new manufacturing jobs. So we've been working with many people on this on this uh, phone call in this <clears throat> briefing here to try to achieve that, uh, not only over the next 10 years, but if we can do it quicker, the better. So we're particularly excited uh, to add this new tool in the toolbox 
uh, and to try to achieve that at a much, much earlier date. Uh, as Mark pointed out, there's a big skills gap and we deal with that in spades in manufacturing. And we have found that uh, where we've been able to transition uh, a, a retiring uh, member from the military into manufacturing, we are able to accelerate uh, the closing of that gap. In some cases, uh, we have a turnkey uh, person ready, uh, willing and able to handle the challenges of today. So we're particularly excited about it. And we're, we're, we're really excited about continuing our work with Veterans Florida uh, to see if we can't make this a a more successful state in terms of our, our economic power. And it's now my privilege to introduce, I guess, one of our newest partners, uh, Mr. Paul Soule, uh, who is the uh, CEO of the Florida High Tech Council. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Uh, Paul Soule here, retired uh, 33 years uh, and probably one of the newest military residents of Florida, having moved the family down here uh, this summer. It's a pleasure to be on you know, bat and cleanup like this, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to hit any point that hasn't already been touched. I'll approach it this way. The High Tech Corridor, we represent 23 counties all the way across from Tampa through Orlando and Gainesville and out to the Space Coast. And we're about high tech innovation. Innovation doesn't stop. In fact, it's accelerating. So if you think about the workforce that we need to hit what Mark talked about at the beginning by 2030, top three in technology jobs, the only way we can do that is with a program like SkillBridge. Um, I will tell you, and this is where I think Veterans Florida becomes a real key player. I didn't know about it till I got down here. And then all of a sudden tripped in on somebody who actually had hired someone through SkillBridge down uh, on the West Coast to be able to say, geez, I never knew this program existed. That's where Veterans Florida can really be that focusing agent to, to get that word out and we can pass that word because you're doing two things for vets. You're easing that transition. And what you're showing them is opportunities. I think one of the biggest barriers is they don't know what the opportunities are that are out there. So as we look at those veterans with the leadership skills that I need in the high tech corridor to be able to hit my goals for innovation in Florida, this is exactly the kind of uh, program we need. So I'm excited to be a part of it and, and learn about it and help Veterans Florida really focus in on it. With that, Mark, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank you so much, Paul. Um, for uh, media who are with us still, if there are questions, just as a reminder, uh, if you can raise your hand, we'll be able to unmute you. You can uh, go ahead and ask a question and we'll be able to um, toss it to the appropriate person to answer. So with that, if there's any questions, please feel free um, to raise your hand. Should I allow it through? Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like we have a question from Drew Wilson. Um, so we'll go ahead and unmute you, Drew. Thank you. Hi, uh, my question is for Derek. I am wondering what would you tell other exiting service members about the SkillBridge program that hasn't already been mentioned? But <clears throat> I've, uh, as, as I've been advising several other veterans, I tell them to just do it because you can't just jump from uh, doing 10, to 20 years of service, like I did, like I, I, I retired with 30 years of service and just jump out there cold, cold turkey, hoping something's gonna happen. And I, you have to, I think it's a great way to transition yourself mentally and personally into uh, being a, a much more valuable asset uh, for any employer, but also for yourself and for your family. Uh, it, helps, it helps smooth the road, but I'd say just do it. Um, it's, it's available to all the services, but what I've discovered is that most, uh, most don't know about it or most don't take advantage of it. The other side of the coin is that they struggle with the services sometimes get released to do it. And I tell them always just, just do it, apply, uh, all they can do is say no. And they still have to quantify the no, believe it or not, because you get a year to two years to transition. And so it, it's, it's important to, to do, to try it at least. Uh, unless you have a very specific skill set that um, industry is willing to take right off the bat, which is very, very rare, believe it or not, for most, unless you're a pilot or a nuclear engineer, it's very, it's, it's, it's a struggle sometimes for most, especially in a change for today's economy. Four years ago, I would say you had options and you had time. 
I'd say now today that you need every everything you can to put yourself in a position to win. And so I would say definitely take advantage of the, of the fellowship programs that exist in Skill Bridge. There's over 200 plus programs. Um, I, I personally did actually uh, onward opportunity under, under Patty. That's why I was glad to see her on there. Um, and so I, I, I combined both the Skill Bridge training and opportunity with with actual uh, actual hard skill set. So I took the Amazon Web Practitioner course prior to even knowing I was going to work at Amazon because I was interested in cloud technology. And that was the one caveat that got me through the initial uh, interview, not even knowing that that would be the end state that I would get off me a position. I just was interested in the technology. And so I, I say, I tell the veterans to take not take advantage of all the programs, not just SkillBridge, but all the ones. And that's why I'm glad to see on what opportunity on here because it's a, it's a magnificent program that that supports in sequence a veteran's transition. It gives them the skill sets necessary to function. Uh, I'm excited to see Space Florida represented on the call because that is a growing and expansive industry. Well, we have lots of people in the Florida uh, service areas that would love to lead the services and transition into that market either entrepreneurially or as an employer, as an employee rather. And that's a great opportunity to do that. So that's why we say just do it to every single veteran I talk to. Thank you so much for that, Derek. And thank you, Drew, for your question. Um, if there's any additional questions, feel free to raise your hand. All right, it looks like that was our only question. I wanted to thank all of our um, wonderful, distinguished speakers this morning for your time, um, Representative um, Saroy and Senator Wright as well, and for all of our media who attended, thank you so much. If I could make one last comment, Yvette, uh, Senator Wright here. Absolutely. I just wanted to remind everyone that our very, very good friend, Major John Haynes turned 91 yesterday. He's a veteran, a Hall of Fame uh, awardee. Uh, last year on his 90th birthday, we flew a flag over the state capitol for him. And so I missed it by one day, but uh, Major John Haynes, he's a pillar of our community and supports all of our veterans programs. So thank you for letting me share that with the group. Thank you. All right, any final comments before we let everyone go? All right, thank you everyone, have a great day.